Can you pick out the star in this kindergarten class? She didn't stand out in the crowd yet, but this little girl was born with some very special talents. Aside from being adorable, she had a bright future ahead. That is, after she escaped the watchful eye of Jesus and ditched the name Myra Ellen. Today, Tori Amos is definitely a free spirit, and she's always been a hellraiser. But the Reverend and Mrs. Amos prefer to remember Myra Ellen as their little angel. My most impressionable memory was right before she was two, we went to her uh, papa and nanny's, and she was playing this little organ, and I still have that in my mind. The Reverend wasted no time enrolling his five-year-old prodigy in the prestigious Peabody Conservatory of Music, but she was more interested in Hendrix than Handel, and when she was 11, she was kicked out. I'm still getting over that. I don't think people realize when you're a kid how much that affects you. You don't understand why you're being rejected. You just think that I'm 11 now and I'm a disappointment. But the Reverend kept the faith and he was determined to keep Tori in the biz, even if it meant going through the back door. We got a job at a gay bar while mother was away. But Tori was only 13 and the bar insisted her parents come as chaperones. With my clerical collar on, no one was going to make a pass at this uh, young lady at the piano. I had never been in a bar until I accompanied her. It wasn't long before Tori moved on without her parents to hotel lounge gigs, but she was leading a double life. By night, a sultry femme fatale. By day, the all-American girl. Voted homecoming queen, best all around, and choir flirt. She even performed in high school musicals. Here's Tori back in 1979 in the production of Gypsy, where she played the lead role of a stripper. But it took a little convincing. Say, you're even younger than I was before I started stripping. Oh, I'm not gonna strip. Something wrong with stripping. No, I just don't have any talent. It didn't take long for Tori to get over her fears. In fact, she's always been up for a walk on the wild side. Remember this image? We're not sure if it's wrong, but it's definitely not kosher. She enjoyed shocking her parents. But she still does. And, and still does. If you want to talk shocking, check this out. It's so nice to live here. That's right. It's shiny, happy Tori performing her first release single, Baltimore. Posted on Baltimore Street. It's some place to call my Not exactly Grammy material, but it did earn her a citation from the mayor. Hey, a break's a break. I'm trying to, to make it in the music business, and the record industry, it's, it's tough. You have one plus, one extra plus, you can sing. <laughs> With that boost of confidence, Tori tossed the pink dress and took off for L.A., but things weren't easy. Just to pay the rent, this starving artist had to muster up passion for breakfast cereal. <laughs> Is it really that good? Mm, Kellogg's just right. Just right. She's lying, Ben. It didn't take long for Tori to go from to serial lover to serial killer. Mrs. Markham, who, who did the police say they had arrested for the murder of your husband? Her. Carrie Hadler. Okay, so we exaggerated a bit. But Tori did get into some hot water on the show Trial by Jury. Were you aware that your husband's body was found in Carrie Hadler's bedroom without pants on? Yes. Would Tori beat the rap? On the charge of first-degree murder, the jury finds Carrie Hadler not guilty. Whew, she got off that time, but not in this early video. Somebody just broke into my car and took my stuff. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm writing you a ticket. You are illegally parked. It's Tori with her first band, Why Can't Tori Read? And that parking violation wasn't the only offense she committed. People's Exhibit 1, the hair. People's Exhibit 2, the sword. Tori finally had a big-time record deal, but she was guilty of 80s music in the first degree. She has struggled very, very hard to get from there to where she is today. Cool. 